Howdy folks. So here we have an Audio-Technica AT92E uh, phono cartridge. And the reason I have this is because this one uh, died on me very recently. Um, I was uh, just gonna go play a record and I put this down and I had no audio on the left channel. So I checked the connections, I checked my amp and you know my amps got really bad uh, internal switches and stuff. I've got to clean them with uh, some contact cleaner at some point. But anyway, so I, I tried around, troubleshot as much as I could, and couldn't figure it out. So I did the sensible thing and I swapped the leads left to the right channel, and the problem followed. So I eventually came down to this cartridge. Uh, the left coil is open circuit. Uh, I measured across the two and we have continuity for the right coil but the left coil is completely open. So uh, this failed and it failed relatively soon. I mean I had this thing three months maybe. I mean it, it died really really early. So I, I was kind of disappointed in that. I, I liked the cartridge enough that I went out and I bought another one and I've put that in and everything's good. So now that I've got this one I thought I'd uh, tear it apart and just see how it's made inside. See if there even is anything we can see inside this, even if it's even possible to take apart. I have no idea how to how to take this apart, and this will also be sort of a good test to see how how uh, well my camera does in uh, macro. So you can see on the bottom we've got Audio Technica Japan. One thing I noticed is the stylus is offset on this, and I didn't do this. I remember when I got it, it was like this, and uh, it worked fine. I mean, it sounded fine. The levels were correct. Uh, so I wasn't too worried about it. It's possible that this led to the failure. Um, and the thing is, when you remove the stylus, uh, the stylus stays bent like that. Uh, so that's not actually like the cartridge that's bending the stylus one way or the other. It's, it's just that's the way it sits naturally. So I'll keep this because this is relatively new and maybe maybe I'll need it as a backup or something one day. So here we've got the, the cartridge itself, and I have no idea how to open this. So this could be an interesting, interesting experiment, and it will probably require me breaking things with pliers. Let's see if I can possibly split this open somehow. Oops, that was not good for the camera. No damage. There we go. So that just, that's glued down to this top housing here. So you can see on the inside of the plastic shell here. There's a little gold gold plate at the top there and they've just attached some some glue to that and that's what they've attached the cartridge down with. It's that sort of yellowy glue that you see in a lot of uh, cheap products and stuff. So this looks like it's one piece of metal that they folded up to form the front and then they fold it all the way around and then they the seam is right at the top here. So I'm gonna see if I can get under there and you can see where they've pressed right there they've actually pressed it down and that's how they form the uh, that's how they lock it down. So I'm gonna hope that my screwdriver is thin enough to fit under there and bend it up without impaling myself which I have done far too many times. I can get one of them up. There we go. So I'm just going to bend those up. Sorry about the focal distance on my camera. It's not very good, unfortunately. Bend 
bend those up. So we can start to see some wires from the coils and then they're obviously on some sort of plastic form. So let's see if I can get, I don't want to damage this any further. I'd like to see that, you know, if it failed obvious in an obvious way, I, I highly doubt it. I mean, the, the failure is probably deep in one of the coils somewhere, but it'd be cool to actually see the failure point. There we go. Okay, so you can definitely see the two two pickup coils there. So they're covered in a piece of uh, thin plastic film to obviously protect them from contacting anything. And I can see one wire running out of this groove and then down through the form and I'm assuming it's probably going to go to one of the two pins on the side here. There's this little metal tab which I can assume made contact with the metal metal case. Let's see if I can get the front down. That was very easy. So there's this that tab appears to hmm, actually you know I'll just remove the whole whole metal case. Oh, so it's sort of tacked on, sort of pressed in to the the plastic right there and there. So it's sort of just sort of clipped on. There's there's no glue for this. It's all. Uh, it's all just press fit. So we can see the, the solder connections for where it connects to the four pins. Let's see if I can trace these. I can clearly see a wire on this pin here running up. I mean, unless you're in HD, you're probably not going to see this. <laughs> That's a thin wire. I can't even tell what gauge that would possibly be. can't tell exactly where that wire goes. It goes up. Oh no. It goes up, across, and into this coil on this side. This one comes out of this coil, runs down, and it runs down to this lower point on this side. So these two coils have a wire that crosses over to the bottom on each. And for the top, Or is there two wires? I mean, I can't. That's small. I, I honestly can't see. That's really small. I actually, I can see three wires. So I think there's actually four wires. They're just, they're so close together. I mean, they're enameled, so they can, they can be like that. They're so close together, but I, I, I can now see four wires. So two of two two of each go to each side. That's that's some mighty fine wire there. Wow. So I wonder I wonder what this actually connects to, what this metal shielding tab or grounding tab actually connects to. Because I can see there's these metal pins on here which go through and they're not what connect to the end of the coils because the ends of the coils are this clear plastic oh, keep bringing it out of frame it's clear plastic so I'm not sure what those metal tabs exactly go to hmm. should I destruct further I think so Gotta stop hitting the camera with that. One of these days I'm gonna scratch the shit out of my lens. Uh, how can I do this? 
Uh, you know what? Screw it. Let's just pull the coils right out. Oh, you know, that actually that's actually quite helpful. That exposes what I couldn't see before. So this metal tab on the end here, it runs down and then it runs across underneath the coils to the other side. And there's a metal strip which runs underneath that and that strip that runs underneath is the inner side of the contacts and the outer side of the contacts is this side of the coil the underside or the inner is the other side of the coil okay okay that makes sense now yeah so those are the tabs that were right here on the inside and then the other side of the coil tabs are on that side so that's how they anchor the coil down <laughs> and that uh, that piece of copper that runs and connects all of it just pressure fit on this end just sort of pressed together by the shape of the case that's what's connected to the uh, to the chassis well, that's kind of cool never seen inside uh, an inexpensive cartridge like this I mean this is not expensive cartridge this one's about 20 30 bucks um, so uh, but I mean it, it sounds pretty good for a, a cartridge of that cost I mean it's nothing like the thousand dollar cartridges but I mean I I think that's a little bit ridiculous so that's kind of cool doesn't I mean it doesn't surprise me why it failed with, with wire that's that thin that's that's pretty ridiculous I wasn't expecting it to be that thin I knew it would be thin but not 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 anything anything like that so yeah I mean relatively well built I mean, by design. Obviously, this one failed, but hopefully, my other one, uh, my other one doesn't have the same fate. I don't, I don't think this would have caused it because I don't. There isn't really a an electrical or mechanical connection really to this. So when this goes in, actually. So when this goes in because that would be where it sits, right there. So you can see on the on the stylus of these two little metal tines that come through, sort of like a, uh, each one is uh, 60 degrees apart. And those two little metal tines, when you insert this into the uh, cartridge they insert in between the two sets of metal tabs and that's obviously how it picks up the uh, that's how it picks it up so obviously because each set of metal tabs is electrically connected to each end of the coil and probably those are they're probably magnetic or have some magnetic properties such that it induces uh, a field in the coil which is can be picked up of course it's effectively amplified by the the massive turn ratio on the coils and that's what's picked up and then of course it goes through RI preamp and all that other stuff so anyway hopefully that was interesting and we got something out of this so anyway thanks for watching